explore, explore, explore scientifics. Explore. I've not been drinking not enough water. From Explore Scientific, today is Wednesday, and today is First Light Chronicles here on Amazon Live. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if you're out there and interested in what we're doing, give us a shout out. We would love to take a question or just a howdy from you. Uh, if you're out there on the social media broadcast, we'll see your chats as well. Uh, looking forward to the next 30 minutes interaction with everybody. So today is First Light Chronicles, and today we're going to be talking about how you get started in the great hobby of amateur astronomy. And the first thing you know you need to do is understand how to get to things up in the sky. And sure, generally, the first thing people point a new telescope at is our closest neighbor, the moon. This is the moon. The moon. This is a moon map from Explore Scientific. It shows 24 prominent features on the moon that are visible uh, with binoculars, unaided eye, and with a telescope. So lots of different things there. A great way to get started looking at the moon. Now, when you look at the moon, this shows a picture of the full moon. The full moon is very bright, and through a telescope, you know, it's not going to injure your eye, but it's really bright. Uh, the best time to look at the moon is when it's got a shadow line across it somewhere, and you look where that shadow is, because that shadow gives you the ability to see mountains and valleys and craters and things like that, making your... Uh, a telescopic, t telescopic tour of the moon, uh, enjoyable, and a whole lot of terrain features become available because you're actually able to see it in three dimensions. Your mind can interpret the dark things as, as where the shadows are, and you can figure where hill mountains are and hills and valleys, all sorts of stuff. Um, so that Terminator is a great way, place to look at the moon. The Terminator. The Terminator. Uh, and on the back... We have where a number of lunar landers have uh, been on the moon, uh, including the Apollo, uh, the six Apollo landing sites are marked, as well as some Russian uh, unmanned landers and a Chinese lander as well. This is the Explore Scientific moon map over in the carousel right now, and you can take a look at it and uh, pick one up for yourself. Makes a great gift, or uh, if you're launching to, with great gift to somebody who already does astronomy, or uh, help you launch your career path down to uh, learning how to use a telescope to look at the moon. The other stuff up in the sky, the rest of the sky, is uh, you need a road map for it. You, it's hard to go out and just find stuff. And we offer the Explore Scientific, Will Tyrion, double-sided, multi-latitude planisphere. we got a video that shows how to use it. We'll show you that here in just a second. The planisphere is a real simple device. It gives you a view of what the night sky is any time of the night. So you can set the date and time, and we'll show you how to do that in just a second. And then it shows you the sky uh, as it looks where you are at that date and time. Now then, it's double-sided. How does that work? Well, one side is for when you're looking north, and the other side is for when you're looking south. So it gives you the whole Tyler sky. Said it was the southern Say again? Tyler said it was the southern hemisphere. It's the southern part of the northern sky because we can see into the southern hemisphere because we're at 36 degrees north uh, means that we can see, uh, what would that be, uh, 64 degrees, 54 degrees of the southern sky. We can't see 90 degrees of the southern sky because the earth gets in the way. But we can see a lot of the southern sky. But it's not just the southern hemisphere. It's everything to the south of where you're standing. And, you know, it's multi-latitude. It works for everybody from latitude zero up to uh, 60 degrees north. It's for the northern hemisphere. And that 60 degrees north encompasses everything up to almost the Arctic Circle, which is 66 degrees, if I remember. Most of the people in the Northern Hemisphere live at 60 degrees latitude or lower. And Santa Claus. Santa Claus lives up there in the land of the midnight sun and also of the three months of darkness that happen north of the Arctic Circle. Paul, why don't you roll that video, would you please? Shows hey, people at any time of the night throughout the year. Once Hi, I'm Kent Marsh with Explore Scientific. 
One of the great things about modern amateur astronomy equipment is the ability to track the sky with the use of a computer, an iPad, or an Android tablet, and a motorized mount like the Explore Scientific PMC-8. But what if you're just starting out or have a mount that is manually controlled? How do you find celestial objects? All you need is a clear sky and a Tyrian two-sided planisphere. This planisphere, created by renowned celestial cartographer Will Tyrian, is for the Northern Hemisphere. If you don't have one of these, you can find it in our online store. Some of our products come with a smaller planisphere that works like this one, but uses 24-hour time and Roman numerals. Honestly, I prefer this one because it's easier to read and contains tons of information. This planisphere is for anyone in the Northern Hemisphere up to 60 degrees latitude north. A planisphere works by aligning the month, day, and time to show what's in the night sky at any time of the night throughout the year. One side shows the northern half of the sky, while the other side shows the southern half of the sky. Now let's line up the date and time. Let's say it's 10 p.m. on August 25th. The first thing to do is find 10 p.m. and it will be in the blue portion of the planisphere, just inside the date ring. Move the date ring to the position on August 25th. Line up the August 25th mark to 10 p.m. You're done. Easy. You now have a map that shows what the night sky looks like in the Northern Hemisphere at 10 p.m. on August 25th. The cool thing about this Tyrian two-sided planisphere is that once the time and date are lined up on one side, it's also lined up on the other. Now we have to orient ourselves to make the map reflect what's in the sky. The North Star, which is named Polaris, is almost exactly due north and should be the brightest thing you can see in the, that area of the sky. Once you found Polaris, you're facing north. Hold the planisphere with the northern side facing towards yourself and position Polaris inside the metal ring so it shines through. Super easy. If you're facing south, simply hold the planisphere level with your eyes to get your bearings. With the map correctly oriented, you should be able to find your way around the night sky. I'm Kent Martz. Keep watching our channel for more how-to videos from Explore Scientific. Hey everybody, welcome back. And now you know how to use a planisphere. It's real simple. Uh, once you get one in your hands and play with it a little bit, in a minute or two, you'll understand exactly how it works. You just set your time, find the date, set your time you're going to go out viewing, and bingo, that's what the night sky is going to look like where you live in the nor northern hemisphere using the Wiltarian multi sided, double sided, multi latitude. Planisphere. Will Tyrion, it's named after Will Tyrion. He's the renowned Dutch astrophotographer. He draws maps of the night sky. He has exquisite detail, exquisite accuracy. Really a great product. <coughs> All sorts of things here to get you started on your astronomical journey. It, coupled with a moon map, are a fantastic way to start down the road to amateur astronomy. So, one way to get started is with binoculars or your eyes. I tell people, if you can find one constellation, find it on the map, on the planisphere, and then learn the constellations around that. And do that for a week. Every clear night, go out and learn those constellations. And then move on to another constellation that you can now find. And just work your way across the night sky. Over the course of a year, you're going to see all the constellations you can see where you live. And you're going to learn those constellations of where to go. It can be really pleasurable, nice and relaxing, no stress, uh, and uh, it's always good to have somebody out there with you as well. Doing it with a friend makes it more fun. Once you progress to binoculars, binoculars become a great way to look at the night sky, and then that leads in a telescope. Lots of people jump straight to a telescope, and that's what we're going to talk about for the rest of the broadcast. So this right here is a first light. Matt Cass, first light is a series of telescopes from Explore Scientific. Sir? You move everything that way. Uh, okay. Got to move the, the table, which is a nice light box, actually. There we go. Is that more better? Yep. There, that's more better. This is a first light from Explore Scientific, Maxitov Krasigrain, uh, shortened to Matt Cass, 127 millimeter telescope. It's got 127 millimeter diameter aperture. That's how much light goes into the telescope. And how this telescope works is it's got a mirror back here in the back that reflects the light back to the front. And right there in the middle, you see that black spot. Is it silver? Yeah, 
silver spot, spot. Behind that is a mirror, a tube and a mirror. That light hits that mirror, and then it comes straight out the back of the telescope through this hole, hits the diagonal that comes with the telescope, and bounces the light up into the eyepiece and goes into your eye. This telescope comes with everything you need to get started. It comes with a 25 millimeter super plossal eyepiece. It comes with the diagonal. It comes with a red dot finder, and it comes with this tripod right here as well. Raring to go, real simple to use. This telescope on this mount, extremely easy to use because this mount is simply a left, right, up, down mount, right? Very intuitive. You don't have to do any aligning or anything else. You can simply go out, set it on the ground. Now you've looked at the constellations. You decided what you look, want to look at in the constellation. You simply point the telescope to it and off you go. But pointing the telescope has a skill involved as well. Right here, you can see the red dot finder. This red dot finder that comes with the telescope puts a little red dot on a piece of plastic in, the, in there that you can see the red dot when you turn it on. And how it helps you is this. You don't just stick it on and turn it on because it may be pointed off in a weird direction, right? Not the same place the telescope's pointing. So what we have to do is Get them aligned to where they're looking at the same point in the sky, okay? Here's how you do that. You go out in the evening, and you find something that's as far away as you can see. Uh, 300 yards is okay, but miles are better, and 10 miles is better than one mile. If you can see the antenna up on top of a mountain or a church steeple or maybe a, a unique tree that's, you know, a mile away, you simply move the telescope, looking through the eyepiece, until you find, let's say, that unique tree that sticks higher up than all the other trees around it, and you center it in the eyepiece. You get it centered up, and you can focus it with this focus knob right here. You simply turn the focuser and bring it into focus. Once you've done that, now you turn on the red dot finder and look through that. The reason you do this in the evening time or early morning is because bright sunlight makes the red dot finder hard to see. So you want to do it as the light is moving either just at, you know, before sunrise or after sunset so it's getting dark. So once you've got that done and on, you can turn two knobs that are ones right here and ones right here, and you can move that red dot left and right and up and down with the two knobs. And so you move that red dot until it's on the very tippy top of that tree or whatever it is you have centered up in your eyepiece. If it's the top of a radio tower, then you'd move the red dot to be the top of that radio tower. If it's a stop sign, you know, long way down the end of the street, It'd be the stop sign. Whatever it is that's in the center of the eyepiece, the red dot's on it. Now, what's the easiest thing to do to test it? The moon, because the moon's big, bright, and easy to find. So now you go out, and instead of looking at the eyepiece and trying to point at the moon, because look, when you're following a tree line, you can come to that unique tree, and you're going to see it, right? Okay. The moon's not the same thing. You're just fishing around up in the sky. You look at the red dot finder, because now it's pointed at the same spot the telescope is, right? Yes, that's right. You're going to move the, red, the, the telescope and put the red dot on the center of the moon. And now you're going to look in the eyepiece. You're probably going to have to refocus the telescope by simply turning the focus knob that's on the back of the telescope and get the moon in focus. Now, if you've done a really good job, it's going to be perfectly centered. But it's probably not going to be perfectly centered because you just weren't far enough. You, your object wasn't far enough away. So it's simple. Move the telescope, center up the moon, very quickly go over, move the left, right, up, down buttons on the finder scope, and there you go, or on the red dot finder, and there you go. You get it centered up on the moon. Look through the eyepiece once more just to make sure that you haven't accidentally moved the telescope. And the moon's moving too, although the moon's really not moving in relationship to us. We're moving, and it's going around. Mechanics up in space get all complicated. But remember, we're the thing that's turning so fast, not the moon. So you're going to... Make sure you're centered up. Check the red dot. If they're both centered up on the moon, off you go. Now you can find other things up in the sky and point your telescope at it using that red dot finder. Now remember, always turn off that red dot finder in the evening when you're done. In fact, I make it a habit of turning it off. I find the moon. I'm going to be on the moon for half an hour. I turn the red dot finder off or my illuminator on more expensive finders. I turn it off. Why? Because I don't want to forget and leave the battery on. And so... Going to turn it off when you're ready to go somewhere else? Simply turn it back on, and off you go into your next object. Now, this is over in the carousel right now. It's the first light MacCaz 
127 millimeter telescope on a twilight nano mount, which will be TN. So the SKU is going to be FLMC 127 1900. That 1900 refers to the focal length. Yeah, is that it's that's it's in the carousel that way, isn't it? Oh, it's not that way, huh? No. Oh, okay. Remember? Yeah, I know, but it says it on the name of the product. I know. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, 1900 millimeter focal length means it has 1900 millimeters from the front glass until it, where it comes to focus. And that's a long focal length, and it's going to give you some real high-powered magnification. People love magnification, but it's not the be-all to end-all. It makes it harder to point the scope and to keep things in. And with that, we're going to go to a telescope that's... Um, which one do I want to go to next? And we'll go to that one next. It's a bigger, te bigger looking telescope, but it doesn't have the same focal length. So we're going to switch this out real quick off the stage and move over. This telescope, this again is a first light telescope, but instead of a, being a Max Tov Cassegrain, it's a simple refracting telescope. Typical telescope when you think of a long tube, lens in front, eyepiece in back. That's what this is. This specific telescope has an aperture of 102 millimeters up here. So the hole is 102 millimeters in diameter. And the focal length is, while this telescope is longer, people think it's going to have more focal length than the other one, but it has 640 millimeters of focal length. The one we just had, looked at has 1,900, so effectively three times the focal length, which means with the same eyepiece, three times the magnification. Now, just like the other telescope, this one comes also with the Twilight Nano Tripod. Simple, left, right, up, down, not a problem. Comes with a red dot finder, comes with the diagonal you need, and this diagonal comes off to make it easy to store. Real simple, right there, all right? It goes on, tighten down the two thumb screws so it stays in, drop your 25 millimeter super plossal eyepiece in there, tighten down the little knob to keep it in place. Now it's there. Now all you got to do is point the telescope and go to focusing just like we did with the other telescope. Now then, same process. Point the telescope in the evening at something that's unique. Look at your red dot finder lined up. That'll make finding things up in the sky so much easier. That's really the way to do this, right? And being able to find things easy and have it point correctly really makes amateur astronomy much more enjoyable. Like any other hobby you're going to take up, I like to use the example of playing a guitar. If you buy a guitar today and order it right here off Amazon.com uh, and it shows up tomorrow, you're probably not going to be able to play the Freebird solo uh, tomorrow night. Probably not. Same with a telescope. There are skills to learn. Can you learn to play free bird, the Freebird solo on uh, guitar? Absolutely. It's Sir? But it's not that hard. Well, but, you know, you can learn it. You just got to spend the time practicing, right? It's not as hard as trying to learn Freebird. The Freebird solo? Yeah. Uh, free, Freebird period. Freebird period. So learn Freebird period. The point of it is, just like you'd have to practice guitar, you have to practice your amateur astronomy, right? You got to go out multiple clear nights, like we started talking about at the top of the broadcast. You got to have a roadmap of where you're going to go, so you need to know the learn the constellations to find what you're looking for up in the sky. Finding things in the constellations takes practice. Finding stuff in the telescopes take practice as well. Now, here on Amazon Live, if you're watching on this platform, we have a chat function. We would love for you to click on that button and give us a shout out of hi or ask a question. And if you're so moved and like what you're seeing and want to get more of this content from Explore Scientific, you can click that follow button and we appreciate that very much as well. So this is the first light 102 millimeter, 640 millimeter focal length telescope, refracting telescope on a tripod, excuse me, on a twilight nano mount. Real simple. Simply move the telescope, use the handle, move it left, right, up, and down, and you can look at things up in the sky from your own backyard or front yard. Now, if you live where there's a little bit of light pollution, it's going to make it a little bit harder. That's okay. Things like the planets and the moon are going to look great in either one of these telescopes. Now, the planets are, are going to look small, 
But because they're small, they're also going to be very, very crisp and sharp uh, as much as you can get what the atmosphere is giving you, right? We have a lot of atmosphere between us and space. That atmosphere is what makes the planets, twi the stars twinkle. Well, the planets don't twinkle, but the same air that makes the stars twinkle is moving in front of the surface, the disk, because planets look like disks in the sky, whereas stars are pinpoints. That same air that makes the stars twinkle is making the surface of the planet jiggle. With a bunch of magnification, you can start seeing that jiggling, too, that makes it not look in focus. Weirdly, at low magnification, that jiggling goes away, and the planets look sharp and crisp. And the first time you see Saturn through this telescope is going to be fantastic. Saturn's up in the evenings now. It's a good evening target after dark. Jupiter's following. There's planets parading along all night long coming up. Those planets are great targets for either one of these telescopes, even from badly dark, badly light polluted skies. You don't have to be out where there's no light pollution to do this. You can do the moon and the planets from your backyard, the worst light polluted spot on Earth. You can still do the moon and the planets because they're so bright, they don't get washed out and disappear because of light pollution. So this is a great telescope, easy to use. Uh, just a great foundational telescope in our first light series of telescopes. Now then, I'm going to move this off the stage and move in one more telescope here real quick for you to look at. This telescope is a little bit different, but it's sort of the same too, right? Yeah, I'm working on it. Yeah, I'm working on it. There we go. This is a reflecting telescope known as a Newtonian telescope. The other telescope had a glass lens and a mirror and it came out the back. Well, this telescope has nothing up in front, but there is a mirror back here in the back that's curved. So the light hits it, it starts focusing to a point. Before it comes to the focal point, it hits a little mirror that's attached to this assembly right here and the light comes out the side right here in the focuser. Again, you get the super plossal eyepiece, 25 millimeter, and you get the red dot finder as well. These also come with a smartphone adapter. All the first light telescopes come with a smartphone adapter. You can attach it to, ah, we have got one over here on the first telescope we looked at. You can attach it just like that, and now you can put your smartphone down on here. And it uh, comes with little uh, suction cups, like octopus suction cups. I always wet them when I use it, and it also comes with a Velcro strap or a, a stretchy elastic strap that you put your, telescope, uh, your smartphone on here with the lens over it, put that uh, uh, stretchy strap on to help keep it on, help ensure it doesn't fall off. So how you do it is you simply turn your camera on and just move it down until you get the circle lined up with the circle and stick it down and off you go. comes with a smartphone adapter as well. Now, this mount is a different kind of mount, okay? This mount is not a simple left, right, up, and down. This is called an equatorial mount. Now, as you get into amateur astronomy, this is the mount you're going to want to go to for a couple of reasons, and I'll tell you what those reasons are, right? This axis right here, you have to line up with the north celestial pole or the south celestial pole. Easy to do with a compass. If you have a smartphone, pull your compass out, Go to the settings, make sure it's set to use true north, not magnetic north, because magnetic north is different from true north. They're different points. If you live in the United States along the Mississippi River, magnetic and true north are roughly the same. But if you get out on either coast, it can be 12, 15, 16 degrees off, which means if you point this north based on magnetic north, you're going to be 15 degrees off or whatever it is where you are and none of your efforts are going to pay off because things are just not going to work right. So this telescope has to be aligned in the north. It's easy to learn how to do. Just use that compass and align this axis right here on the side, right here. There's a little scale. That's what latitude you're living at. So here in northwest Arkansas, we're at 36 degrees north. So we just set it to 36 degrees, point it north, and now what we've done is we've aligned the telescope to the rotational axis of the Earth. So the axis of the Earth is tilted, right? And the telescope is tilted, so we're matching that rotational axis. The beauty of that is 
is once you learn how to use this telescope and want to look something in, we'll say, uh, the northwestern sky. Actually, let's look in the southwestern sky. You're going to find it. You're going to use the red dot finder to put it on your target. And where's that other locket? There it is. And now I'm on the wrong side of it, but this would work. You've got these slow motion control arms right here that you can use to turn the telescope left and right and up and down. So I'm going to move this one to this side of the telescope. It really easily comes off. Just remove the set screw. Don't remove it. Just take it all loose in the set screw. And then bend down here so I can see it. Nope, can't do it on this one. Got to be on this side. But you see the point. This assembles real easy. And I did take the set screw out after I said don't do that. But it's easy to get back in. It's easy to get back in. Nothing on this telescope is hard once you learn how to do it. There it is. Put this back over here. Tighten this extension, this arm down. And now what we can do is we can follow. Once we get our object centered in the eyepiece, we can simply follow it across the sky. Why? Because this axis right here mimics the rotation of the Earth. And as things move across the sky, they move an arc just like that until they disappear, right? And we can follow it across the sky. So what if it's pointing something we'll look at in something in the southeast sky? Real simple. We just come over here, point the telescope where we want it, get it centered up on an object, lock it down, and there we go. Now we can simply follow this object all the way across the sky, but at some point it's going to get past the east side of, the, of this and go to the west side. At that point, you simply do what's called a meridian flip. You unlock it. You move it to this side. You go find it up there in the sky just across what's called the meridian. The meridian is the term that refer, refers to I struggle to find all these because I don't use them up. Where are you hiding at? There you go. And now we can simply follow this object across the rest of the sky until it sets in the western sky. This is the first light, 114 millimeter, meaning it has a 114 millimeter aperture, 500 millimeter focal length on an Exos nano mount, often termed an EQ3 mount. Because this has those axes of rotation that match the Earth, this mount becomes a really nice tool to have because you can follow things across the sky without having to continually move it and move it and move it and, you know, try and move it. These slow motion control arms give you the ability to turn them really slowly and keep things centered up in the eyepiece for long, easy, simple viewing. So that's the broadcast for the day. Have we had any questions, shout-outs, or anything, Paul? Nope. Nope. Nobody's wanting to talk today. That happens periodically. So if you've been watching, we appreciate your time, and thank you for it. It is a gift to us. Uh, without our customers, we aren't here, and we thank you for that. So don't forget, over in the carousel right now, you can pick up these three telescopes. You can also get the moon map. A great tool to start learning how to uh, turn it in the correct direction. Moon map, great way to learn how to start doing amateur astronomy and look at the moon. The moon is up pretty well every day except when it's a very new moon. Now, sometimes it comes up late at night or very, very early in the morning. But if you're dedicated to it, you get up and you look at it a little bit. Uh, on the back side, uh, the Apollo landing sites and some Russian unmanned landers, as well as the Wiltarian double-sided mole tidal latitude planisphere, a great tool to understand what's going on in the night sky tonight as the night goes on. You can look at the sky tonight on this and tell exactly what's going to be up in the sky and visible where you live. So with that, I bid you adieu. Thank you for blessing us with your time. We truly appreciate it. On behalf of Paul Newton over in the control booth and Noah Menard over in the marketplace brain center. Oh, and then come here, Ben. Ben, you waved. Come on. You got to come on screen. Come on, Ben. Come on, Ben. Ben said hi. Go. Uh, come on, Ben. Go. Ben's coming over.
If you, if you interact with the host, you got to come on, on the screen. Absolutely. Oh, you've got a cool little thing there. This has nothing to do with what you're doing. No, it doesn't, but we can still talk about it for a second. We got go. Here's, this has been a bear. He's a Hello. director of sales. This is the Star Maker video kit for ages, what, eight and up? Yep. This is an awesome thing. It's not in the carousel, but go find it in the Explore Scientific store on Amazon.com. Uh, it's a great kit. It has a camera, a selfie stick, a tripod. It has a 1080p video. I think it'll hold an hour and a half of video. It has green screens, a clapboard, all sorts of cool stuff. This is a cool product. If you want to be the hero gift giver for Christmas, Ben's going to agree. This item right here is going to make your 8, 10, 12-year-olds just a happy camper. So anyway, bye, Ben. Thanks for waving at me so I can drag you onto the screen. Thanks, everybody. Got to go. Bye-bye.